curious, be humble, okay. ask questions, seek to understand not just how you see the other, but how the other sees you. Los españoles, los catalanes, los latinos, en general, hablamos para lucirnos. Los estadounidenses hablan para que les entiendan. Esa es la conclusión de la entrevista con Erin Meyer. ¿Cuál es la diferencia cultural más evidente entre los latinos y los estadounidenses como usted? We have these different perceptions of what different cultures like, which are often, often linked to our own culture. Like in the U.S., we complain a lot about how French are always so, um, they're always so chaotic and disorganized and late, right? And the Americans complain, just as you've said, that, and the French complain, the Americans are <laughs> lacking flexibility. Right? Huh. But, but what's interesting is that then, you know, like I'm working with these Brazilians who are living here in France and they see the Brazilians, they see the French people the same way that the Americans, sorry, the Brazilians see the French people the same way that the French people see the Americans. They're always like, oh, those French, they're so obsessed with timeliness and they're absolutely losing. They absolutely, they have no, no ability to be flexible. Uh, so it's interesting how we have these relative uh, opinions about what a culture is like based on where our own culture falls on the scale. Usted dice que a los latinos nos gusta lucirnos al explicar algo. Y en cambio a los estadounidenses les gusta sobre todo que les entiendan. It is true that Americans are much more focused on um, telling you what you're, they're going to tell you and then telling you and then telling you what they've told you <laughs> or recapping and writing, right? So they're more focused on the clarity of the message versus in, um, in Spain where there may be more of a, a focus on kind of picking up subtle messages. Anglo-Saxon countries to um, to Latin cultures. Let's make okay. that lesson. Is the way that we are um, are trained to build an argument, no. and the way we're trained to persuade people in different cultures, right? Okay. Um, so in um, in Anglo-Saxon environments, we're particularly strong in the U.S., but we also see that in Australia or Canada or even the U.K. We're really taught to get to the point right at the beginning which is so different than the way that, um, let's say children are trained in a Latin environment to, to build up an argument, which is much more of this like introduction, thesis, antithesis, synthesis. ¿Por qué una presentación en una empresa, la exposición de una idea, no es un striptease? No es para lucirse poco a poco. Um, so I had this Spanish guy in my class. And he said to me that he has this American boss and he went to the U.S. to give a presentation, right? It was a really important presentation. And his boss's boss was there, right? And he gave the presentation the way that he would in Spain, right? So he, he you know, built up his argument and he um, started out, introduced the topic, built up his argument, knew there was some things that the audience wouldn't agree with, addressed those things next, and then came to his conclusion. Right. And he said that his boss said to him afterwards, <laughs> he said, uh, well, I don't know whatever the guy's name was, Fernando, um, you know, a presentation is not a strip tease. <laughs> the next time that you come to the U.S. and you stand up in front of my boss, take yeah. off your clothes and get right to the point. <laughs> okay. If you do not have nothing nice to say, do not say anything. Si no tienes algo bueno que decir, sobre alguien o sobre algo, más vale que te calles, no digas nada. Esa es la regla de oro de la cortesía de la politeness estadounidense. Y nosotros no solemos cumplirla aquí. ¿Por qué los estadounidenses, Erin? ¿Son hipócritas? ¿Son ustedes unos hipócritas? When it comes to giving feedback, which is a second of my communication dimensions, we see the opposite, that Spanish are actually much more direct than Americans are in the way that they deliver um, criticism. 
And we're taught in the US to give three positives with every negative and to catch people doing things right. So when we give feedback, we're likely to start by saying this was amazing and this was excellent and I really love that. And then this might be something that you might think about doing differently. So that's where things become quite complex, right? So I might be working with a Spanish manager who's um, leading a global team and on his team, he has a group of Americans. And what he knows is Americans are direct, right? He knows that from cliches and maybe even his experience with how explicit Americans are. Um, so then he gives feedback the way he always gives it. And then he finds out he's getting a call from the human resource department <laughs> because his, his team says he's bullying them, right? Yeah. Which is actually something I just said a few days ago, Americans yeah. complaining that their European managers are bullying them. <laughs> Um, so here's where I think it's really important that we recognize that, um, that, yeah, I mean, these differences, they're subtle, they often don't match our, our stereotypes, uh, but they can be quite serious if we ignore them.